I've spent two videos defining algebraic plane curves and two types of singularities, nodes and cusps. Now I want to actually use implicit derivatives to find these singularities. I'm going to do this for a special form of algebraic plane curves, the form y squared equals p of x, where p is a polynomial only in x and of degree at least 2. The degree of p, since it is at least the same as the degree of y squared, will determine the degree of the curve. For some p of x, these curves are called elliptic curves, which are a very important class of curves in mathematics, even with applications to cryptography. For degrees higher than 3, these are called hyperelliptic curves, and again a much studied class in mathematics. There are a number of advantages of working with this form. First, all of the singularities are going to fall on the x-axis, which makes them a bit easier to find and understand. Secondly, I can expect the singularities to be either vertical tangents, double point nodes, or cusps. There are a few other possibilities even with this restricted form, but all the curves that we will work with this week will only have these three possibilities. Therefore, this is a great environment to demonstrate how I can interpret the implicit derivative to find this geometric information. The key in all of the study of algebraic plane curves is to see what geometric information I can get out of the equation itself. Using a computer to graph and verify is, of course, always fine, but I want to extract the information directly from the equation of the locus without having to use a graphing tool to see the behavior. So how does this work? Well, I start with an algebraic plane curve of the type I want, y squared equals p of x for some polynomial p of x in x. First, I check the domain. The left side y squared is always positive. I can only allow x values on the right which lead to positive numbers. So this is an important domain restriction that may affect future parts of this algorithm and calculation. Then I calculate the implicit derivative which calculates the slope. Usually, there will be some places where the implicit derivative fails. As I said, these will be all along the x-axis for this particular form. To find them, I'll replace y with plus or minus the square root of the polynomial p. This is what I get if I solve the original equation for y. Well, then I'll have an expression only in the variable x. And I'll look for an undefined point of this expression x values where there is division by zero or some other similar problem. These undefined points are the potential singularities. Then I want to classify the potential singularities. Are they vertical tangents, which are not singularities at all? Are they double point nodes, or are they cusps? And I can do this by taking the limit of the implicit derivative approaching the undefined points. This is where domain can matter. The limit might only be from one side from the left or the right, if there is a domain restriction. There are three cases. If the limit is plus or minus infinity, there is a vertical tangent. The limit going to infinity means that the slope is getting steeper and steeper, and in the limit, getting steeper and steeper indicates going towards a vertical tangent. If there are two values for the limit, due to the plus minus from the substitution, then it is a double point node. The two values indicate the two slopes of the two components that intersect at the node. And finally, if the limit is zero, there is a cusp. The flattening of the line near an undefined point indicates a sharp corner, which is a cusp. And that's the classification algorithm. Using the limits of the implicit derivative, I can extract the geometric information I want, the type of the singularity, just out of the equation without having to draw anything at all. Here's an example. This is a degree third 3 curve of the appropriate form, an elliptic curve. I've written the right side in both factored and expanded form. Often a curve is written in expanded form, and the derivative can be easier to calculate in expanded form, but factored form is usually better for most of this process. The domain is all x less than or equal to 1. If x is larger than 1, then 1 minus x is negative. And since x plus 2 squared is always positive, x larger than 1 will make the right side negative, which is impossible. So I only expect this curve to have points with x coordinate less than or equal to 1. Then I take the implicit derivative. On the left, the derivative of y squared is 2y times the derivative of the inside dy dx. On the right, this is an ordinary x derivative, 
which I again write in the factored form after differentiation. Then I divide by 2y to get the isolated dy over dx. This is the implicit derivative. The next step in the algorithm is to write y as plus minus root of the polynomial p of x. And here the factored form helps, since the square root of x plus 2 squared is just 2 plus x. So y is plus or minus 2 plus x times the root of 1 minus x. Then I make that replacement to get an implicit derivative defined entirely in the variable x. Now I look for the undefined points. There is division by 0 when x is negative 2 and when x is 1, so these are the potential singularities. Finally, I take the limit approaching these singularities. Before I take the limit, to simplify the calculations, I cancel off 2 plus x from the numerator and denominator. I didn't do this earlier, since that 2 plus x is important to indicate a potential singularity. Approaching 1 from the negative side, because of the domain restriction, I can only approach from the negative, leads to negative 3 in the numerator and something near 0 in the denominator. A finite non-zero number divided by something getting closer and closer to zero leads to a limit that diverges to plus or minus infinity. Therefore, I expect a vertical tangent at x equals 1. I also take the limit as x approaches negative 2. Here, the numerator approaches 6 and the denominator approaches root 3. These are both finite and non-zero, so I just evaluate. 6 over root 3 is 2 root 2, so the limit is plus or minus 2 root 2. There are two slopes here, so this is a double point node. Here's the graph of the curve. There is indeed a vertical tangent at x equals 1, and a double point node due to self-intersection at x equals negative 2. The main domain restriction is also visible here. The curve has no points for x values past 1. Here is another example. I'll go through the algorithm steps. First, for this curve, x cannot be negative. The domain is x greater than or equal 0. Then I take the implicit derivative. The derivative on the left is 2y times the inside dy over dx, and the derivative of the right is just 3x squared over 4. I solve, and the derivative, implicit derivative works out to be dy over dx equals 3x squared over 8y. Then I substitute y with plus or minus the square root of x cubed over 4, which I can write as x to the 3 halves over 2. That gives me an expression for the implicit derivative purely in terms of x, and the only undefined point here is x equals 0. Then I take the limit approaching x, approaching 0 from the positive side, since the domain doesn't allow approach from the negative side. I can simplify the exponents of x, leaving just a root of x in the numerator. Well then there is no more division by 0, and the limit of this just evaluates to 0, and since the limit evaluates to 0, this must be a cusp. Well, here is the graph of the curve. You can see that it obeys the domain restrictions, only positive x and x equals 0, and that there is indeed a cusp at the origin.